We're getting to the beef. Um, this is the actual letter that was sent to the EOC showing that, or rather or, uh, showing the evidence, right? providing evidence that they believe is evidence, facts they believe will be turned into evidence at trial, of unlawful racial discrimination, also religious discrimination, uh, by Disney. So here we go. Here it is, the letter from America First Legal regarding the Disney discrimination, the complaint to the EEOC. So February 14th, 2024, written to Christina Park Consens, director of the EEOC in their LA office. This is an investigation request of unlawful racial discrimination by the Walt Disney Company. Dear director and attorney and regional attorney, the America First Legal is a national nonprofit organization working to protect the rule of law, due process, and equal protection. We write pursuant to 29 CFR 1601.6, an organization requesting an issuance of a commissioner charge for an inquiry into an individual or systemic discrimination related to illegal employment practices of the Walt Disney Company and its subsidiaries in violation of Title VII. An unlawful, and by the way, let me explain. You have to go through the administrative process. You have to exhaust the administrative process before you sue for civil rights claims. So you have to, under Title VII, go through this, get approval of the EEOC before you go and bring the claim. It's a condition precedent. It's a requirement before you go in. So this is what's going down uh, with, with this. They're getting, they're going to the EEOC first to exhaust this administrative remedy. An unlawful employment practice is established when the evidence demonstrates that a race, color, religion, sex, or national origin is a motivating factor for any employment practice, 24 U.S.C. 2000. Here, Disney admits, they admit themselves. This is what I said, guys. I said this very, very clearly, uh, and this is one of the problems that Disney has here, is that they confess to their crime, right? They said, okay, yeah, we did this. We know we did this, right? And let me, uh, I actually want to see, can I, okay, whatever. Um, they're only giving me orange. Fine, fine. Disney admits and affirms. They said they had a racial quota. They put 50,000. Oh, sorry, 50,000. <laughs> Still not awake. God. They put 50%. They put 50% must come from an underrepresented group. Because of that, they are admitting they're doing it. They're saying they're doing it. They're knowingly doing it. They're intentionally doing it. They've put it out there. They've said what that means. They've said they're using race, color, sex, national origin as a motivating factor in its employment practices, not just hiring, but in promotion, termination, um, training. Disney as a, is a publicly traded company incorporated under the laws of the state of Delaware. They're a Delaware corporation. With its principal executive offices located at 500 South Buena Vista Street, Burbank, California, 91521. Disney has affirmatively represented to its shareholders, investors, and the SEC that it continues to make employment decisions based on the individual's race, color, national origin, sex. Guys, remember when I said this is going to lead to a flood of litigation? You know what this is going to open them up to? And this is America First Legal signaling in their discrimination lawsuit. They are signaling to shareholders, <clears throat> Nelson Peltz, attention, Nelson Peltz, that if they wanted to bring a shareholder lawsuit alleging that Disney is engaging in illegal practices which are putting undue risk on the company and lowering its stock value, they can go get them for that. They are they're giving Nelson Peltz a green flag to go in there and get them. They're giving them permission for the SEC to come after there, to come after them and get them. This is very, very interesting uh, to drop that in there. Disney maintains multiple programs that facilitate the limiting, segregating, or classifying of employees or, or applicants for employment in new ways in business that would deprive or tend to deprive white, male, or heterosexual individuals of employment, training, promotions because of their race, 
color, sex, or national origin. Boom. On its face. On its face. Not okay. Disney's Reimagine Tomorrow website showcases a program of unlawful quotas rebranded in an Orwellian disinformation fashion as diversity, inclusion, and policies. Guys, if George Orwell was alive today, he would be shocked to his core about what's going on. The stated pretext for the company's unlawful conduct is to broaden access and diversity to the industry. Oh, sorry, I forgot to read the sentence. To amplify underrepresented voices and untold stories and champion accurate representation in media and entertainment. Is it accurate representation if you are overrepresenting these groups? That's not accurate. For everybody in a show or 50% of a show to be of those characteristics is not accurate. It's inaccurate. Studio productions, by the end of 2022, they want to be inclusive with the goal of advancing representation in the front and behind the camera. Disney Entertainment encompasses essentially all the content produced by Disney, so the unlawful requirements listed below in Disney's inclusion of standard apply company-wide. This is a company-wide policy. They list different actions in its production that satisfy the inclusion standards and they can follow illegal quotas for productions ranging from incorporating characters that in stories that highlight underrepresented groups, which includes 50% or more of actors and writers and producers and directors. These quotas are applied behind the camera. So 50% of producers, writing staff, 50% of co-producers and below writing staff, episodic directors, 50%. Meaningful representation, that's also that's also enough. This is a tendency to be discriminatory. That's enough. Promotion of a member of an underrepresented group, that's also enough to sue. Promotion is enough. Substantial year-over-year -year increase, that's enough. Why are you hiring based on that? You cannot use this as a criteria. And then they go into more patently unlawful race and sex criteria. 50% of line producers and production heads, costume designers, composers, editors, music, music supervisors, mid-level crew. They also require, oh, they also require, this is, this is the one that got me, guys. Look at this. They require, straight up require, Hiring a line producer and production uh, department head that is a member of an underrepresented group. They just straight up require that. They also have paid employment opportunities that only target underrepresented groups. Paid uh, training opportunities, skill development only for underrepresented groups. First job, that is the definition of giving priority for members of underrepresented groups. 50% of outside vendors and contractors. Also, by the way, discriminatory. That's an discriminatory practice, right? And then you've got the FAQ. The FAQ states that the expectation is that inclusion standards will serve as a catalyst for the hiring processes. So they're saying that it's part of their employment practice, their inclusive hiring and employment practice. They're admitting this is something they are already doing. Disney admits this is an example of inclusive hiring and employment practice that is, in, that is improving access to training and development opportunities for a member of underrepresented groups. They admit to a pattern and practice violation in violation of 20, uh, 42 USC uh, 2000. So let me just pull up that statute. USC 2000 E to D, right? So let's, let's pull this up. Let's pull this up, right? So let's, let's look over here. So we want to, we want to fact check our lawyers here. We want to make sure we're all, we're all checking everything out, making sure everything is all good here. So let's check out this code, right? So let's check out this code. Let's see if America first legal, let's do some legal analysis, right? Because God forbid, we, you know, a lawyer does legal analysis. It's such a controversial thing nowadays. 
Let's check out um, 42 USC 2000 uh, E-2, unlawful employment practice. So all of these are unlawful employment practices for employers, right? So let's scroll down here to E, right? And by the way, look at this, training programs. This is under D, actually. Uh, it shall be an unlawful employment practice for any employer to uh, employ a labor organization or a management uh, organization to give apprenticeship or training, including on-the-job training, to discriminate against any individual because of his race, color, religion, sex, or national origin, and to provide any sort of barrier on admission or employment in an apprenticeship or training. Boom, they're done. Here we go, E2, right, E2. Well, E2, wait, oh, sorry, this is the wrong one. Hold on, hold on, let me go back for a second. Let me make sure I'm getting the right one here. Uh, E2D, one second, one second. Oh, I had the right one with D. Sorry, I had the right one with D there, guys. Ha ha, that was the right one. It was a training program. This is the right one right here. So because they engage in that training program, that's what's impermissible. So because we're under E2, this is D. So because they engaged in training programs that were discriminating based on race, color, sex, national origin, it's unlawful. And guys, these are not, this is not, I know some other lawyers get confused, right? I know they get confused. This is not defamation, okay? This is not about defamation. I know it's confusing for some people, right? I know some people, they struggle. They struggle with what cause of action we're talking about here. This is not defamation. This is a labor claim. Labor claims are very straightforward. You do a thing. You're not supposed to do that thing. You're, you're, you're liable. There's no, like, you don't need criminal intent. This is not CSI, guys. This is not CSI. If you do the thing, you are liable. It's as simple as that. You do the thing, you're liable. You don't need to have this. Do they have the mens rea, right? That can make it worse. If they were doing it intentionally, that can make it worse. But they're still liable, civilly liable, if they did this, which they did, right? They clearly did. They openly admit they did. They admit they're doing. And this is where they're in deep trouble. Let's continue with, uh, with this letter here. Because I want to make sure that we uh, we get through this whole letter here as we do this analysis for you guys of the new Disney lawsuit. Guys, make sure you're smashing the like button over there on Rumble and on YouTube, uh, wherever you are. Smash that like button if you like this content and you want to see me make more of this type of content. Disney engages, admits engaging in unlawful race and sex-based workplace balancing. So they noted that they were dropping the percentage of white directors. They're increasing the percentage of women. They're increasing the percentage of people of color, of uh, male producers, right? They're decreasing them, white male producers. They're actively showing how they are discriminating. Imagine, okay, some people have trouble understanding this. Here's the easiest way to understand this. Let's go down. This is the letter. Let's go down to this graph, right? Uh, here. Imagine. If you see this same graph and it sees how it says negative, imagine if this was showing it the other way. Imagine if instead of more women and less men, it was showing the other thing. What would happen immediately? What would happen immediately? If, if it was showing that Disney was increasing the number of men, what would happen? We all know what would happen. And that'd be a giant lawsuit, massive lawsuit. So that's what that's what I just want to point out here. The fact is, is that for too long, people have thought, oh, it's okay to discriminate against people if they're white or male. It's it's not. Just because they haven't been caught, right? Disney may set case precedent. Imagine this. 
um, Disney sets case precedent in America. The Disney case becomes case precedent in America for the impermissibility of employment, training, compensation, promotion, hiring, quotas targeted against white men, Christians, and Jews. That would be mwah, perfect. If that case goes down in history, if Disney's fate is sealed as the one who was the true discriminating power, they're the ones that were really the discriminatory folks, that would be the true legacy of Disney. That would be a perfect legacy for Disney. And look at this. They've got a grant program here for 25 k to financially support underrepresented directors. That's impermissible. That's impermissible, right? It is patently unlawful to consider racial, ethnic, and sex-based characteristics in hiring, training, promotion, and compensation. Decades of case law have held that that's not okay. The Supreme Court has said a benefit provided to some but not to others necessarily advantages the former group at the expense of the latter. It's on its face. It's obvious. By its own public admissions, it appears that Disney is knowingly and intentionally violating federal civil rights law. Their employment practices, as described herein, are unlawful. They are also profoundly harmful. Discrimination based on immutable characteristics such as race, color, national origin, or sex generates a feeling of inferiority as to their status in the community and may affect their hearts and minds in a way that is unlikely to ever be undone. More broadly, that discrimination highlighted in this case necessarily foments contention and resentment. It is odious and destructive. I love that word. Odious, such a sexy legal word. It is truly a sordid business, this divvying up, divvying us up by race or sex. A commissioner charge should be issued here. Thank you in advance for your cooperation. Read Rubenstein, America First Legal.